pain is one of the most common reasons that people see their doctor. I used to describe the pain as um, like having a skewer going through my ears. And I couldn't believe that, you know, women were just walking around with this problem with no treatment, no doctors. The other women and men that I've spoken to have gone through a series of uh, doctor appointments and tests and felt like they were walking through a maze without any light in sight. Walking through a maze with a, a blindfold on. Traditionally in the United States, we operate under what's called a biomedical model, which means that physicians are trained as scientists to use scientific method. And in scientific method, we look for evidence, evidence of uh, symptoms, evidence of disease. I kept telling my gynecologist back in my 20s, I said, there's something wrong with me. And he kept just brushing it off. You're almost relieved when your blood work or tests show something, because you're like, finally, this doctor with their fancy degrees is gonna believe me that there's something wrong with me. I think that pain is a protective thing for the most part. On a daily basis, if you have pain for a variety of reasons, it's usually your body trying to alert you that something is wrong. We don't understand why that type of pain can become chronic. What we've noticed as research has gone forward is that um, many people who suffer from one pain problem develop another one in the future. As a consequence of having endometriosis, I came down with very severe fibromyalgia. I also suffer now from osteoporosis. There's a lot of overlapping conditions with fibromyalgia, and I feel like I'm this big magnet out there. When I came down with fibromyalgia, I uh, contracted TMJ. 90% of TMJ patients are women who aren't taken seriously. We have very little uh, knowledge or epidemiological research that's taken place on chronic pain in general, and even less on the conditions, uh, the chronic overlapping conditions such as vulvodynia, TMJ, interstitial cystitis, fibromyalgia, headache, chronic fatigue, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. There is a, a belief there that, that when a woman has temporal mandibular joint disorder, that is all because of stress and their age. I think one of the diseases that has really gotten extraordinarily short shrift is chronic fatigue syndrome. There is the sort of callous expectation, even in the part of society, oh, if you just pushed yourself a little more, if you just went out there and exercised, and you, you know, you wouldn't be so tired all the time. There's even doctors now who don't acknowledge fibromyalgia. I just don't want to go to a GYN who you tell them you have vulvodynia and they're like, what's that? A woman is diagnosed with vul vulvodynia if she's had vulvar pain, which is typically burning in nature, but it can be stabbing, stinging, rawness. My discomfort has a lot to do right now with the, the pelvic floor muscles, so it can be a, a very tight sensation. We've heard from many women at the organization that they've been told um, nothing is wrong with you, this is all in your head. Uh, maybe your husband or your boyfriend is cheating on you and you're having subconscious issues. Um, try to have a little wine before intercourse next time and it won't be so painful. There is an inordinate sense for a lot of these illnesses that it's in your head because the doctors are frustrated, they can't find the disease, so the quickest thing is, you know, go, go see the shrink about it. Communication is the basis of healthcare because it is the only way that physicians can connect with patients and through listening to patients, which is part of communication, they get the real clues that they need to make a proper diagnosis. A surgeon that looked at me and said, well, all women have endometriosis and you just need to shake yourself off and get back to work. 
you know, sexism has a long reach in American medical history. We use the male as the norm, and that anything deviates, and I should, we should say really the white male model, anything that deviates from what kinds of diseases this male has, what kind of treatments work, what kind of medications work, really gets short shrift in American society. We know from a lot of research that providers are less likely to make an accurate and speedy diagnosis of female patients based on what we call feminine style, the way that females in this culture, in this country especially, are trained to communicate from a very early age. We're trained to be nicer, to use more qualifiers, to be more indirect, to be more relational, which means that we spend more time getting to know someone. You have women who are in pain seeking care from health care providers who don't have adequate knowledge about the conditions. Number two, they don't have, there isn't adequate scientific data to inform them on what treatments they should be recommending to patients. And then you have insurance companies who may be denying the treatments that may be effective for her pain. I'm in too much pain to spend an hour and a half on hold with an insurance company. And the insurance companies know that and they take advantage of it. The cost of, of getting insurance is staggering. And women are also, as we know, paid less for equal work than men do, so they start off at a disadvantage. It is just all your money. I mean, we, we put off buying a house. We, you know, we put off so many things. We never went on vacation. We never did anything. Twelve surgeries later, I now have uh, bilateral um, metal joints. Instead of a house, I have a jaw. You know, if somebody says, how do you feel, you don't want to say, I feel like, I feel horrible. You want to be able to say fine like everybody else. So um, you just have to find those ways that, that can make your life a little bit easier. It's stolen my career from me, so it, it's affected me a great deal. In chronic conditions, they, they don't kill you, but in many cases, people tell us that they, make, they, they feel like they want to die. I think if this was something that men were suffering, um, there would be a lot more money going into the research, and there would be a lot more um, solutions out there, I think, for them to choose from. We have some you know, promising results in terms of what could be helpful, but I think that with more research funding, with more people having an education or understanding about pain, that that could be a lot more promising and we could relieve suffering in millions of people.